Morning, millions of people getting ready to shop online this morning for Cyber Monday. So glad you're with us at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Conard. And I'm Nettie Irambo. Are you one of those people logging in right now? Credit card in hand. Yeah. <laughs> you got your apps ready. Shoppers expected to spend even more than on Black Friday. CBS 8 Santa Marie McNichol working for you to keep your money safe while you're shopping online. Of course, that's where a lot of scams happen. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you see Ray-Bans for $25 to $50, <laughs> are probably yeah. trying to scam you. Of course, you have to know people are out there to take advantage you on these days, but we are going to see amazing deals. Be wary of those misleading advertisements, look like websites and untrustworthy sellers. Again, the deal's too good to be true. It probably is. So first, beware of false advertising and phony websites. So be sure to shop with trustworthy sellers on secure sites only. Now, you can check if a company's business profile is legit on the Better Business Bureau's website. All right, so next, make sure your antivirus software is up to date. If there's any problems, this is how you're going to be protected from hackers. Experts say you'll also want to watch out for phishing scams that comes in forms of unsolicited emails, texts, or calls. Now, these messages may claim you have a free gift waiting for you or that there's a problem with your Amazon delivery. All you need to do is not click on a link, and this is a way to protect your personal information. Now, we spoke to a cybersecurity expert about this further take a listen don't log into a website unless you normally would for example if somebody sends you a link in an email uh, don't click that email link to go log in instead go to the app on your phone or go to the website that you would normally log into and then from there you can go ahead and uh, you can reach into it that way your final tip, use a credit card, not your debit card while shopping today. The Better Business Bureau says if shady charges do turn up later, you can report them through your credit card company. You never think it's going to happen to you, but I hope you have happy shopping. All right, Dana Marie, thank you. Now this morning, many travelers continue to head home after this long holiday weekend. The Sunday after Thanksgiving, always the busiest day at the airports and on the roads. Things are changing, though, a bit these days with more people working from home. They uh, can do some work on their laptop and maybe mm -hmm. extend the little uh, break a little longer. CBS 8's Chris Grow live in Normal Heights with uh, more on that. I, I, I returned yesterday from mm -hmm. a, a trip a couple hours away, and uh, I'll tell you what. Didn't see much, much on the roads. Not, not too busy, bad. Not long lines. So uh, maybe people are extending their their break here. Yeah, in fact, you could be seeing more people on the road today, tomorrow as they return home. Yes, there are people who are probably enjoying a little bit of that relaxation, still maybe having a bit of that vacation while working from their hotel or their family's home or whoever it is that they were visiting during this Thanksgiving holiday because that is what travel experts are saying that essentially with more people working from home they're taking a little bit more time off if you will before they drive or fly back to their destination now according to AAA nearly 55 million people traveled for the holiday for Thanksgiving weekend which means that we are back to pre pandemic levels in fact that number is a bit of a record there for AAA. They said that that is the third busiest year since the company started keeping track. Now on Saturday alone, the TSA screened more than 2.2 million people. Now, it wasn't all smooth though, both on the roads and in the air. Severe weather was the reason why we saw 6,000 flight delays and cancellations nationwide. Mostly impacted New York, Chicago and Washington, D.C. So a lot of those colder weather areas where we got some precipitation as well too. nothing to nothing too big or nothing too serious to report here in San Diego and in L.A. But as for driving, we could potentially see a lot more people on the roads today and tomorrow. And that's certainly what some travelers across the nation saw. We make this trip about once a year for Thanksgiving and it's pretty typical to see this every time. And something else that people are seeing as you see right there on your screen, gas is going down here in San Diego County. So if you are visiting, now's a good time to fill up because this marks the 17th straight day. We're now sitting there at $5.09 for a gallon of regular gas. The average price has actually gone down 50 times in 54 days since that record high on October 5th. So that is the best news that we could be hearing as many of us continue our work week, if you will, as we know that that holiday weekend is over. 
We're gonna have to drive. You see the people on the 805 right here behind us. They're gonna need to fill up soon. Good news is it won't have to be as expensive as it used to be. Eric Netta. All right, Chris Grow with that live report. Thank you. Turning now to this developing story this morning, San Diego police are looking for the person who shot a teenager in the arm. This happened after a party in Otay Mesa West about 1230 yesterday morning. Police say two groups got into an argument at a home on Palm Avenue near Norstad Street. As the party was breaking up, one of those involved pulled up out a gun and started shooting. A 16 year old boy was then shot in the arm. He was taken to the hospital and will be OK. Right now, we don't have any details on the shooter. Today, the man charged in the mass shooting at a grocery store in Buffalo from earlier this year will be in court. That shooting happened in May at that Topps supermarket. The gunman killed 10 people, all of whom were black. The suspect is expected to plead guilty to state charges this morning. Now that's according to the attorneys representing the families of the victims. His court appearance comes a day after survivors and loved ones gathered to remember the victims killed in the shooting massacres across the country. Danya Backus reports. Vigils for victims, makeshift memorials, and communities nationwide coming together to pay tribute to those killed in mass shootings at a Virginia Walmart and a Colorado LGBTQ nightclub. Whenever there's situations like this that happen, um, we all feel so helpless. Five people died and dozens were injured more than a week ago when a gunman opened fire at Colorado Springs Club Q. Police credit two heroes for taking down the shooter and potentially saving lives, Richard Fierro and Thomas James. James, who is still hospitalized, released his first statement Sunday, including, if I had my way, I would shield everyone I could from the nonsensical acts of hate in the world. At Fierro's brewery, customers are waiting for hours in line to show their gratitude. We are overwhelmed by the love and support everyone is giving us and we feel it. Survivors of other mass shootings push to get donated money flowing to victims. The money can help give the restart that all victims need. After the violence, hope to heal. Donya back is CBS News, Los Angeles. In the wake of the Club Q attack and a rise in hateful anti-LGBTQ rhetoric, bars and clubs across the country are stepping up security. Coming up here in our next half hour, we're going to take a look at the new measures just added at the rail in Hillcrest. In just a few days, street vendors will be disappearing from parts of downtown San Diego. Street vending has been banned in the gas lamp East Village in Little Italy since June, but starting this weekend, police will start reinforcing the ban after one person was stabbed in an alleged vendor turf war near Petco Park last week. Some say getting rid of vendors will lead to less violence and less trash, but one vendor told us this will make overcrowding in other areas worse. It's already been creating a problem for me for a few months now. Like, I, I have to work twice as long for half as much money since they've showed up. And on top of that, like some days I can't even get a space because they're packed in so tightly. One area where vendors are allowed is near Harbor Drive by the fish market there, as long as they are not on 5th and Broadway or Harbor and 5th. Take a look outside here. Things uh, starting off pretty pleasant out there as far as the temps are concerned. Yeah, I will say all that you're seeing right here allowing for warmer conditions, at least right now. But this is a week that we're going to be below average each afternoon. So don't expect temperatures to ramp up too much for your afternoon highs. You saw clouds at the coast, clouds all the way extending inland. So over much of San Diego County, you're covered in this layer right here, which is also why you're not too cold. We didn't see those overnight temperatures drop too much. Our Onshore flow is here, so checking in on visibility, you're down to four miles in Ramona, five in Otay Mesa and Imperial Beach, so it doesn't look like it's too foggy on the roadways, but just keep that in mind. A little drizzle coming in with this marine layer that we're seeing. This is the view from Mount uh, Soledad as you look towards the north where you see kind of that haze overall. It's 58 degrees by parts of our coastline, especially for downtown. That's pretty warm. 52 in La Mesa, 53 in El Cajon. We saw all last week temperature 
temperatures down into the 40s, even the 30s in some areas. So what you're noticing here will be quite a significant warm up. Look at that 24 hour temperature change, 10 to 15 degrees warmer, all thanks to the marine layer, the clouds that we have. But that's also why our afternoon highs are below average. So overall, you'll notice these clouds are hanging on. We're going to continue to see that. In fact, there's this area of low pressure right around here, hovering over San Diego, LA, Northern Baja, and that's contributing to more of the clouds on shore push. That's what's coming through, which keeps us cooler each afternoon. You're going to be below average upper 50s, low 60s. That's it for San Diego County. That is cool for us. Wind advisory starts at noon today through eight o'clock tomorrow morning. As you see the mountains and the east slope. So overall, here's why we're getting that onshore flow, as I mentioned, and it's going to basically come up over the mountains and then move on down on the eastern slopes into the deserts. 40 to 50 mile per hour winds. These are the kind of winds that could impact high profile vehicles, semi trucks, things like that. So if you are headed that way, uh, please keep that in mind. It's going to be pretty breezy. You'll want to take your time and just keep an eye out for those road signs. Even on the west side of the mountains, you're not immune to the breeze. 15 to 20 miles per hour. Looking at your afternoon highs today, 62 IB. Same with San Ysidro, Coronado downtown. So not major changes from the coast to inland. That's because we're all impacted by the same weather pattern. Now looking at your commute here this morning, I will say it looks in Chris Grove's live shot there, 805 in the uh, normal heights area, but I don't see any major crashes, no slowdowns. All of our major freeways are in the green, as you see. The only area where it's busy right now, typical, would be Coronado as people are heading on base. Look at those drive times. Yeah, this is a good time to be on the roads. Eric.